Hello, I'm Bob Allison, WB1 GCM ARRL test engineer here at the ARRL laboratory and in the screen room. I'd like to show you the Win Radio Excalibur, model number WR-G31DDC. Well, here it is, the Win Radio Excalibur. Not much to look at, just kind of a box with a blue light on the front, a couple connectors on the back. But it's interesting, it has a uh, plastic covering. There's an aluminum box which houses the electronics, but it's covered with uh, plastic sealed in it. I like that because, well, in case you spill your coffee on it, it won't leak through. <laughs> the front panel's just the power on-off switch, a pleasing blue LED that blinks at you. And on the back side, I'll rotate this around. And we see the power connection, the proprietary USB connector, and uh, an RF connector where you hook up the antenna. Now, this uh, unit comes with a very nicely written manual that's 105 pages long. And it also comes with this transformer, 12 volts at 800 milliamps. After it runs a while, it gets just a little bit warm, but uh, nothing to be uh, alarmed about at all. Now, let's see the graphic interface. Well, here it is, the Win Radio Excalibur. And you see three individual displays here. The bottom display shows the RF spectrum. And we have it set up to show 30 megahertz wide. So you can see all the activity throughout the shortwave bands. Here we're looking at the bottom of the, uh, at the bottom of the spectrum near one megahertz, which means that's the AM broadcast band. We see some activity around nine megahertz. And here's your 40 meter band right in here. It looks like the, some ham activity. Uh, another shortwave band. Here's your 20 meter band activity in here. A broadcast band, a broadcast band, some activity on 15, there's uh, 12 meters, and some activity on 10 meters. And this line's jumping up and down because locally here at ARL headquarters we have some RFI and some troubling spots on some electrical poles not too far away. I wish they'd fix those things. The top window on the left here is your digital down converter window, and you can see up to 2 megahertz of bandwidth here. And this is your demodulator window. And you can look at uh, the RF signal here as well as the audio response. And I'll show you that in a minute. Let's take a little tour around the screen. Follow my mouse. This is your uh, choice of receivers. You can listen to three individual receivers at once. Isn't that amazing? Let's see, receiver one. Here's a station on the AM broadcast band. It's our local WTIC radio. And it's an interesting feature. Follow the mouse. You have the main carrier here. We can actually visually see that with an SDR like this. We can see the side bands here on this side and this side. Here's your high def audio channel on the left, the left channel, and the right channel here. And you can see that the high def channels are 30 dB down. Very interesting. Now, watch this tuning. It's great. For those of you that don't want an SDR because it doesn't have a knob, well, here it is. Click on it. And there we go. It's doing it one kilohertz steps back and forth. Uh, and, of course, you can do a direct entry. Uh, that's accomplished by simply hitting, let's say, 1.290.0. M, as in megahertz. Enter. And uh, now we can hear a local classical music station. And check this out. Watch this. You can widen out the filter bandwidth, narrow it down. Just like that, that's just slick. And the audio quality with it widened out is high fidelity. So if you think AM radio is just really muddy, try listening to a, an SDR on it. All right, let's go around to some of these little windows here. We can select a waterfall at the digital down converter, and we have a display there. There it is. It's a waterfall, yes. Uh, this is our direct down converter bandwidth. We can adjust that all the way up to 2 megahertz. I just have to use the little thumb wheel on the mouse to make this adjustment. And I like it best at 50 kilohertz, so I'll leave it there. Now let's go over to the demodulator board. We can actually look at the demodulated audio. 
and we're looking here between the this is baseband audio between zero and about six kilohertz and you see the audio kind of tapers off at 10 and we can set up the the filters the audio filter here to end at any which direction and we can also adjust the shaping of the filter we can make it razor sharp if needed and that's done by adjusting if we go up to options and we have something called the modulator filter length and we adjust that and we can make this audio on the edge very 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 sharp if we go up to here you notice now that this edge up here drops very 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 sharply so with CW in that mode you could really make the filter very very sharp for copying Morse code that's great uh, we'll go back to the RF spectrum now up here is your modes AM a synchronous AM Oh, that's just wonderful. If you listen to shortwave, you turn that button on and the, the, the fading's still there, but that nasty selective fading goes away. That's just a great feature to listen to shortwave radio on. Upper lower sideband CW. DRM, well, we can listen to digital uh, radio. Was a Mondale, I believe it's called? Yes. Uh, but you have to uh, purchase a license key through Win Radio. Very interesting. I like that kind of stuff. It's great how technology has advanced with SDRs, and who knows what the future is going to bring. I'm Bob Allison, WB1GCM, ARL test engineer here at the ARL Laboratory.